Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and at the end of the work week, Unity dropped the newest version of Unity, that is Unity 2019.2 Beta. So this is the first beta in the 2019.2 branch, and truth of the matter is, so close after GDC, there are no huge surprises here. In fact, I would say that there are no surprises for me here. Everything that is in this release has been announced and is pretty obvious. There's not a ton here, but there is some nice new stuff, so without further ado, let us jump in. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is the, uh, I guess, the, the most exciting new feature here and there's there's nothing really new about it either but it is definitely nice and that is there is a new package available as a 1.0 preview now there's actually a lot of changes that revolve around packaging things have been uh, moved out of the core editor and into packaging to make things kind of a more clean line install if you don't need those particular packages but what we're particularly interested in today is um a new package come in here to advanced and set show preview packages on and it is called polybrush now you may be reminded way way back um 2018 unity bought pro builder and polybrush and made both of them available for free well what you can see it is now available as a preview package in 1.0.0 form so that's what we're going to go ahead and show you today now polybrush is actually a really cool thing it's basically like sculpting from maya but tightly integrated we're going to show you an example of it running as soon as this install finishes so it is now available in package form before it was a plugin you had to download from the asset store enable it and so on so we'll let this enable now do keep in mind it is is considered a preview package so you do need to toggle show previews on to find it in this particular list but there you go it should now be installed and we'll go ahead and import in the sample project so I can demonstrate this to you now I do have to warn you up front when I ran this on my other computer um, it bugged out so there, it may not actually work right now I can demonstrate it to you but it was kept undoing all the changes I made and hopefully that is no longer the case okay so we've imported it in we'll go ahead and open that scene up so we'll open up demo scene you can see it gives us this simple kind of world to play around in so go back here to scene mode and you see we can now deal with it so if you come up here to tools you'll find a polybrush um, menu there and we're going to open up the window and you'll see here you've got various different sculpting tools so example we could come in here and change the texture based off of whatever texture we currently have selected uh, doesn't have texture blending enabled so I'm not going to I can't do that okay so here we go so we're selected and now you can go ahead and paint in that color surface uh, we've got other options here for uh, placing things and scattering things in the scene like trees and grass and so on now you'll notice it also immediately undid now I might be doing something wrong uh, but I don't think so. It does seem to be kind of just glitching out at the moment. So here you see we're in the traditional sculpting mode. And this is the big thing behind Polybrush. It's basically a hands-on sculpting and texture painting application directly inside of Unity. So what I can do now is actually sculpt. So we've got various different tools. We can control our brush. We can cause it to go up or down and so on. You can create new brushes. And then you can basically sculpt your world. Now you'll notice my textures are suddenly back. And now they're gone again. The same with the sculpting changes I've made. I let go and they're gone. Start sculpting again and they are back. So I don't know if this is a bug in the current package as it stands, um, but you can at least get an idea of what Polybrush is all about. Um, so between the texture painting, here we got smoothing. So I could come in here and smooth, but you'll notice again, my changes are only coming when I come in and do it edit. Um, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, we've got, all right, what is this guy doing? Uh, oh, and this is for painting vertex colors. For so this is scattering items in your world again, like uh, grass or trees or so on. And this one here is for the texturing that we saw earlier on. So I can switch here to this grayish texture, and we can add gray into our world. So that is Polybrush, and you can obviously see how when it actually works correctly, this is a powerful new tool. No, I'm actually not new. It's been around for quite a while, but it is now implemented as a 1.0.0 preview package. So if you want, do check that out. It is a very cool tool. Now here we're setting at the Unity blog announcements for this release. I will, of course, link this in the article link down below. But what you're seeing here is it is available on the Unity Hub. So if you want to grab this guy, of course, go to the Unity Hub. I guess I can show you that. At Unity Hub. So what you want to do is fire up your Unity Hub, go into the installs, go to beta releases, and you will find it there to install. As you can see, I've already installed it, so there's nothing more to see. I do. I am starting to warm on the Unity Hub, to be honest. Uh, so next up, and this one confuses me a little bit, just by, I, I understand what they're describing. I just don't understand how it would work. I would like a little bit more description here, but they worked for the Android, developed in partnership with Google Android Gaming and Graphics Team uh, to provide 
consistent frame rates via optimized frame pacing. So I think this is, I actually don't understand how this would work. I think what they're trying to do is get the timing, the millisecond timing between frames to be more consistent. Uh, but would it slow you down to have a more even pace? The only way I can see to make frames smoother is to actually drop frames so you're updating at a consistent frame rate. So I don't really get what optimized frame pacing works like, and there's not a lot of details here, but uh, you know what? Just turn it on and see what it does for you. Uh, they also added OpenGL multi-threading on iOS to improve performance on low-end devices that do not support the metal renderer. For both iOS and Android, we added OpenGL support for the SRP Batcher to improve CPU performance in projects that use the lightweight render pipeline. Also introduced screen brightness controls. That's actually pretty nice. We have the new screen.brightness property, so you can easily change the brightness of the screen of the device you are running on on iOS and Android. Uh, we've also got some stuff here for screen.cutouts for the wonderful new world we've got of punches and um, chins and, um, God, what's the proper name of these awful things? Ah, oh, mental blocking. But basically, I hate these cutouts. I despise them. But at least if you are dealing with code, you've now got the ability through these new pro, uh, profiles to basically say, give me the safe area that will cut out and black bar away um, the, the chin or the cutouts on your device or the proper word, which again, I'm not coming up with. Um, now, we've also got the app bundle size warning. So you can actually have it co compute the bundle size for your APK to make sure that it's within the size for the, the selections that you've done. Uh, as we already mentioned early on, Polybrush is now a preview package. We saw that working. Now, again, that is on two computers now. It's constantly undoing the changes unless you go back in and edit again. So it does seem to be a little bugged right now, but Hopefully that is fixed. That's one of the nice things about it being a package though. They don't need to wait till the next release. They just need to update the package, update it to their package manager and you need to download it and you get the current fixed version. So hopefully that happens soon. So we got new 2D features in the lightweight render pipeline and shader graph, including um, will be updated with the experimental 2D renderer, which contains 2D pixel perfect. Uh, I think I did a video on that in the past, to be honest, and new 2D lights. So they got a video here showing the lights in action, which is kind of cool. Uh, we got a couple of new denoisers here. So they're using the Intel open image denoise IP, um, AI based denoising filter uh, to help with your light mapping. There's also some more stuff about light mapping. We'll see in just a second. Uh, probe lit GI contributors. We have changed the terminology for objects that are light map static, which will now, um, which from now on will contribute GI instead. So basically a naming can change that they've done there. GPU light mapping improvements. The GPU light mapper is taking some steps towards parity with the CPU based light mapper. The GPU light mapper was added the last release. Uh, and obviously the name is pretty self uh, evident. It's using the GPU for light mapping instead of using the CPU. Uh, so now the GPU light mapper has the ability to support NVIDIA's optics denoising. That's in addition to the new denoising that we talked about right here, uh, multiple important sampling support for environmental lighting, increased sampling performance when using view prioritization or small low occupancy light maps. Uh, again, we have NVIDIA's Optics AI denoiser for light maps upgraded. Uh, so now it will add support for the new NVIDIA Turing GPUs, lower memory and faster performance. Um, new cloud diagnostics user reporting SDK. This sounds really interesting, but it's very limited on platforms. So it says users can now take screenshots asynchronously and log bug reports while playing the game and apps. Sweet on Windows and UWP only. Hmm. So that's new. Uh, type cache API in editor code provides a fast way to access types or methods marked with specific attributes as well as types derived from specific class or interfaces. Um, the Unity distribution portal, I've actually done an entire video on this in the past. So here is the article. I will link this as part of everything else too. This hands-on video will show you the UWP in action. Basically, this is a way for you to publish your game and manage in-app purchases and everything using one code base, but to multiply different stores. Now these are somewhat smaller or niche stores. Um, you see Catapult, Aptoid, Moo, uh, I'm assuming connected to one store in Geo Games, but frankly it does give you access to new markets for very, very little work. Um, but this is not new and I've already done a video on it from a few months back. We've got some improvements to AR or augmented reality, including support for face tracking, 2D image tracking, 3D object tracking, and environmental probes all in preview. You can get more detail on what exactly each one of those things make, but the, the names actually make pretty good sense of what they're all about. Uh, this one's kind of nice. HD for uh, the HD render pipeline for VR is in preview right now. Uh, until recently, I think you've been stuck with the standard render or lightweight render pipeline. Uh, editor features are now moved into the package manager. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, they're moving more and more functionality out of the editor and making it optional. So this should make the editor less bloated. It should make it so that they can update those packages cleaner and quicker. Um, so I think this one's basically a win, but what they did is moved adds 2D sprite editor and 2D tile map editor as 
uh, packages to be added in the package manager. So if you head on back over here, for example, and we go back to the windows, the package manager, you should now be able to, there's ads, uh, I don't know what the other ones are called. So, okay, so here we go. There's 2D Pixel Perfect they were talking about earlier on. The tile map stuff should all be in here. And it looks like it is all, yeah, so there's your tile map editor and so on. So this functionality has been moved out of the core editor. It's not there by default. Now you come in and add it as a package. And I think actually as a net, that's a net positive move, I think. You make things less bloated and easier to update. And that is kind of it, to be honest. There is uh, full release notes. I will link them as well. Um, but that is kind of the thing. So there's the full release notes if you want to get into the, the nitty gritty details of what was in this release. But it's not one of those releases that's going to set the world on fire. There isn't a whole lot here. Um, I do like the reorging things into packages. Um, I like Polybrush. I wish it worked a little bit better right now, but hopefully that is fixed really soon. But that is Unity 2019.2. What did you think? Favorite feature? What was missing? What did you really want to see that didn't quite make the cut? Let me know all of these things in the comment down below. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.